cleared. The umpires are out as they go over the ground rules with Clint Hurdle on the left and uh, Giants bench coach Ron Wotus on the right. There you see the umpires. It's Brian Rungi behind the dish, then Hudson McClellan and Ted Barrett. Tim McClellan, the veteran in the National League, and he, of course, is the crew chief here. As take a look at Buster Posey as he takes the field. Very nicely done. Three game ceremonies were fabulous. Buster Spones is smiling. My partner was great. And the weather is fantastic. And our game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open for spring break right now through April 15. 53 degrees here at the yard. Winds at 12 miles per hour. Humidity at 72%. We'll see sun, but there are clouds in the sky. All right, let's take a look at the Pirates lineup. It'll go like this. The leadoff hitter will be Alex Presley. Presley will lead it off, followed by Walker, and then one of the best players in baseball right now, Andrew McCutcheon. Go back to Walker. You can see 83 RBIs last season. Casey McGee, the former Brewer, he'll be at he'll be the cleanup hitter. Then it'll be Jones Barajas, followed by the be the youngster Pedro Alvarez. Josh Hansen will hit eighth, and James McDonald will pitch in bat night. On the hill today for the San Francisco Giants will be the big right-hander Matt Kane, 6'3", 230 pounder, in his seventh year at the big league level. Last Sunday, his first outing of the year was a no decision with six innings, allowed five earnings. When he's right, he's going to mix a fastball up. He'll go inside, outside. He'll change the movement with it. He'll pitch above the letters as good as anybody in baseball. Big curveball, slider, and a cutter, and a changeup. So he'll give you a lot of different looks. And he likes to work a fast pace. Lifetime against these Pirates, he's one and two with a 3.63 ERA. So here's Presley. In at third is Sandoval, and the first pitch of the ball game is a call strike. So we get started right on time. The 0 1 pitch to Presley is inside, one ball and one strike. Presley. Off to a, a nice start. He's seven for 22. With Walker and then McCutcheon to follow. And the next pitch is high. Two balls and one strike. Kane coming off a start in Arizona that uh, he'd like to forget about. But he's been thinking about this one ever since then. Swing and a miss, two and two. Both teams come in with the same record two and four. However, the Pirates won two out of three against the Phillies in their first series. And that's how this game gets started with a strikeout. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind Matt Cain today. Starting in left field will be Cabrera, Pagan, and Sherholz. Lots of Lots of coverage from those three in the outfield. Crawford, Sandoval on the left side of the infield. Burris and Huff on the right side. And Buster Posey will be in the squad putting down the signs. The strike zone from Brian Rungby is a low strike zone. He will give width on both sides of the plate, but he likes those knee-high strikes. Here's Walker. Walker takes a strike. He's off to a 1-for-18 start. But... This guy's dangerous. And it's 0 2. Good two pitch combination. The first pitch fastball strike one, change up, swing through. So early on, he's established the knees with this command of the fastball, and he's got that change up. Walker, one for three lifetime against Kane. And that pitch is high.
So they take two out of three from the Phillies go into L.A. and the Dodgers sweep them. Down low it scoots away from Posey and if you look at some of the averages these early averages by the Pirates you can see where their struggles have been. Now they've been at the plate and they come in with the team batting average of 199. Two and two to Walker. Got him. Get another change up for the payoff. Play. Just take a look at the grips that Kane will use today. Starting with the standard four seam fastball. That's his base. And he'll also two seam the fastball when he needs sink or movement running away from a lefty into a righty. Now there's the circle change. It's a pitch he learned at the big league level. He'll use that a lot. There's a curveball. He'll steal strikes with that. And there's a slider. And there's the arsenal of Matt Kane. Here's McCutcheon. And McCutcheon on the first pitch pops it up. Could be an adventure. And Burris stays with it, and that ends the inning. A one-two training for Kane. Giants coming up. Bruce Bochy's lineup. It'll go like this Pagan, Cabrera, Sandoval, three switch hitters. Sandoval, good numbers against the Pirates. Buster Posey in the cleanup spot. Then it's Huff, Sherholtz, Crawford will hit seventh, Burris eighth, and Kane ninth. James McDonald on the hill today for the Buckos, and there's what you see that he did in his first outing. McDonald, 27 years old in his third year at the big league level. Big guy, 6'4, 205 pounder. With a good fastball, it can be straight, but he pitches above the belt well, kind of like Matt Kane. It's a fastball that'll go mid 90s with a 12-6 curveball, and it's a good one. If he gets that thing over, it's a rough day. And he's also come up with a changeup, which really has been the, the deal maker for him. He is now a guy that they really count on in their rotation. They expect 200 innings out of this guy. One in one lifetime against the Giants, but with a good ERA and a twos. First pitch strike to Pagan hitting 130. Did get one hit yesterday that knocked in a big run. Pops this one up. It'll be Harrison the shortstop and Pagan is retired. Let's take a look at the defense employed by the Pittsburgh Pirates today. Starting in the outfield from left to right will be Presley, McCutcheon, and Jones. Harrison and Alvarez, they'll be on the left side of the infield. Walker and McGee on the right side. And Barajas will be in the squad putting down the signs. Here's Melky Cabrera. Cabrera. 10 for 26 on the season. And he takes the first pitch down low. He's only faced McDonald three times. He's one for three with a double. Sandoval to follow. Because that pitch is high. Three and oh.
There's Sandoval chalking up. And right there on the outside corner, three and one. High three quarter release for McDonald. That's what gives him that 12 6 break on that curveball. And that's what gives him a straight fastball. Cabrera lines it to right. And that's a base hit. And he takes that wide turn and challenges a good throw. And that'll bring up Sandoval. First start in the outfield day for Gary Jones in right field. He's got a good arm. Let's take a look at the swing of Melky Cabrera. Gets a fastball middle in right at the belt. And you can see the little reverse C on his hands. He just kind of loads. And the hands so calm. And it's a straight downward path. He does not drop that those hands at all. It goes right in the ball. And he back spins just about everything. And that's our expo. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Here's Sandoval. That swing from Cabrera is almost identical on the right side. We'll talk about what he does to prepare a little bit later. McDonald keeping an eye on Cabrera. He's been thrown out in one steal attempt. Sandoval hits one to left field. Presley on the move, and Presley will put it away. And here's Buster Posey. Betting for catcher number 28, Buster Posey. Ovation for Buster Posey, as you would expect. Posey on the year is five for 17, one for five lifetime against James McDonald. Two outs, one aboard, just underway here in San Francisco. Now throw back is Melky Cabrera. Donald does just about everything you need to do out there, and he does it well. And he feels his position well. He's got a quick move to first base. Does a good job of holding guys on. He's the finished product. Posey hits one high and deep in the center field. McCutcheon on the move off the top of the wall, and here comes Melky Cabrera. And the throw home is late. And the Giants lead 1 0. Keep an eye on Cabrera. He really jammed that left wrist into the ground. Well, he's feeling as he's walking back into that Giants dugout. He had to go a long way for first. I thought that ball was out of here. That ball was absolutely. Destroyed by Posey, but here's the slide. What's the left wrist? And it looked like it got stepped on by Rod Barajas, the Pirates catcher. It was. So maybe it, it might be a spike mark on the top of his hand. I'm not sure how good it felt in that shoulder hitting that shin guard either. Well, yeah, he's got Dave Greshner right now all over it. He didn't want Greshner to look at it. Here's Huff. How about that for Buster Posey? Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back, Buster Posey. He, he destroyed that ball. I can't believe it stayed in here. Huff takes high. Two balls and no strikes. Huff has got good numbers against McDowell. Four for nine, a double and a home run. Well, McDonald pitches high, and Huff is a good mistake hitter. Bell high and above, flat swing, loves the ball middle away, and a bullet to right field, and that's going to be a base hit. And here comes Buster Posey. The throw is cut off, and now Huff is in a rundown. 
And Huff is tagged out, and the Giants lead 2 0. So the Giants here in the home opener score two. 2 0, San Francisco. for fans on Brian Wilson and Buster Posey. Brian Wilson is off today. Per Bruce Bochy, he said immediately following yesterday's game that Brian would not be available this afternoon due mainly to workload, guys. He threw 56 pitches in his last two outings, so not to worry too much about the tweaked ankle, and Bochy said he will be available tomorrow. As for Buster Posey, spoke to him briefly about the shingles. Good news is he's feeling very well. He actually felt sick in the exhibition series, broke out in blisters in Arizona, but he's on on the men clearly feeling well, as you noticed last inning, Twain. All right, Amy. Here's Casey McGee. Amy doing the doctor's report. She's pretty good at that. Yeah, she was getting pretty specific there. Yeah. I was starting to gag a little. Yeah. Hammered into center field. Pagan is going to drift back, and Pagan's going to make the catch. Wow. The thing had a mind of its own right there towards the end. The one thing you have to learn playing center field here at AT&T is you get drift. The prevailing winds blow straight out the center. And this ball starts to carry it. Watch at the very end. He's got to break out the extendo arm to go and gather it in. I mean, every game is like going to school the first day of school when you go out to center field here. Well, it winds up being a pretty spectacular catch. High over the shoulder backhander. You see he walked out on the field with today? Willie Mays. Here's Garrett Jones. Casey McGee's used to that ball going out in Milwaukee. Yeah, he's off to a good start here. It's a little different watching McGee in a, in a Pirates uniform. You're so used to it seeing is. him in a Brewers uni. It is. Late call strike by Brian Rungi. You're going to see some width on both sides of the plate with Rungi. And as we are seeing here firsthand, he likes that low strike. Similar strike zone to his father, Paul Runke, who we had when we played. Rahas to follow. Huff and Posey with RBIs in the first inning. In the dirt, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Bottom. Elevate by design. Nice pitch. Right now we're going to take a look at our forward right choice. 
And Buster Posey got it all started here in San Francisco. First inning, he gets a fastball middle end and just rifles it right off the wall of center. It would allow Lucky Cabrera to score all the way from first, and the Giants took a lead. 1 nothing. We'll make that spin of the bat our forward right choice. Here's Barajas. A bit high strike to Barajas. No balls in one strike. Well, he's got a good pitcher zone, but what he'll do is have a wide strike early, and it tightens up as the game goes on. Check swing roller. Burris will have plenty of time, and that'll end the inning. Sure holds Crawford Burris coming up. On Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Eric's Deli Cafe. Defending your inalienable rights to freshness and quality. Sandwiches and more with character. 2 nothing, Giants as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Sellout crowd. The bunting is out. I don't know what bunting was until my first opener in Cleveland. Bunting? That's what they make me do. Yeah. They make you, me bunting. You were a good buntinger. <laughs> Here's Nate Sherholtz. Sherholtz takes the pitch down low. Two for nine. Both hits home runs. Crawford to follow. Sherholtz way out in front. We first saw James McDonald, the Dodger organization, hard thrower, 95 and above, big curveball, and he was a two-pitch guy. And then somebody taught him to change up, and that changed everything. Now that pitch will change a lot of pitchers if they can figure it out. Well, it certainly helped him. And he started to two seam the fastball, give him a little more movement. He learned how to pitch up here. Three and one to Sherholt. When you get to the big leagues on stuff, you stay up here when you learn how to pitch and use that stuff properly. Sherholt slices it to left, and he's got a base hit. Well, Giants fans, the 2012 season tickets are now sold out. So thank you to the 29,250 season ticket holders. Giants have now started a waiting list for the 2013 season tickets. And you can be on that list by making a $500 deposit. Visit sfgiants.com or call 415-972-2298 if you want further details. 
Nice hitting by Sherholtz. Here's Crawford. Crawford swings and misses six for 23 on the season. He has never faced James McDonald before. See one adjustment he's made is a strong front shoulder and a very very still look at the ball. His head stays completely still through the swing. He really I mean, he missed that last one, but it was a great swing. He's had nothing but a great swing since the season started. Sherholtz is leaning and he goes and Barajas's throw is on the money and they got him. Harrison applied the tag. So with one out, 0 and 2 to Crawford. And there's nowhere for Sherholz to go as the throw went right in. And as soon as it was caught, Harrison put the tag on just by catching the ball. Crawford lines it to left. Presley will put it away. Two outs. And here's Emmanuel Bird. So Burris comes in hitting 375. That works out to a three for eight. Three hits, eight at bats with an RBI. And the first pitch is down low. Burris reaches, it'll be Kane. Two nothing Giants here in the second. Burris lifts it to left. Presley already with a lot of work. And that'll end the inning. Through two innings here at ATT Park, two nothing Giants. is brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Swing away for big league cash only at Cash Creek. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Great look at the Bay Bridge. Great look at a 2-0 score. Giants on top. This Pedro Alvarez will lead things off. Alvarez way out in front. He's off to a slow start. One for 13. This is a year that Pedro Alvarez has to do something. They are starting to lose a little patience with their former first round pick in the draft. Are we talking first, 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 first? We're talking first, first. He was the guy. One ball and one strike. 
his one hit is a home run. But Pirates want to see a little bit more out of Pedro Alvarez. Swing and a miss, two and two. He's got lots of power. That he does. He's got plenty of pop. If you look at his major league totals, 582 at bats hitting 230 with almost 200 strikeouts, 199 in those 582 plate appearances, and that's too many. He's got seven this year and 13 at bats. Make it eight. Four strikeout for Matt Kane, and right now, folks, he's got everything going. But his fastball changeup combination is so good at times he'll just pitch with that. He'll flop a curveball over to to steal a strike early in the count. But that payoff pitch like that one to Alvarez change up. What a beauty. And when we first saw Matt Kane, I don't think he knew how to spell change up. Didn't have it until he got to the big leagues. Josh Harrison, one for four on the season. Clint Barmas usually is in the starting lineup, but Barma says such poor numbers against Kane that they decided to give Harrison a shot. How about one for 18? What sets the changeup up? You can see the circle change grip. Is the arm action has to be identical to the fastball? You get a guy out there. You see that knee break over his foot, his, on his front leg. I mean, you know his weight's committed, and he's gone. He's got nothing to. Even if he hits the ball, he's not going to go anywhere. Rungi says Harrison went around. It's one and two. Talk about the five things that Kane does with the baseball, and he will drop the arm angle down about 10 or 15 degrees. Mostly to right handers. Work for Crawford. Ball comes up a little bit. And here is James McDonald. Crawford actually caught that one back. May have rolled up on his wrist. McDonald hammers one out to Triples Alley, and Cheryl says, I'll have none of that, and that'll end the inning. <laughs> Two nothing Giants. Ask Crew and Kai. Visit CSMBayArea.com and ask us a question. We're going to answer one a game. This one comes from Jamie from Stockton. The question is, what is your most memorable home opener since you guys became broadcasters? Okay, what is your most memorable? Well, I think the very first game they played here was one to remember. 
And they got beat by the Dodgers. Kevin Elster had three home run day, six home runs hit that day, but it was memorable. Here's Kane who takes a strike. We were completely wrong about how we thought the ballpark was going to play after the first game. Now, mind you, we haven't been wrong since, but we were wrong about that. We, we were big time wrong, but with all the anticipation of the new ballpark, and then to finally see as to how magnificent it was, that was a day I'll never forget. Well, I'm going to tell you about a home opener that was pretty special. How about last year? The Giants hang the flag, and then they did, did they win it in 11? Aaron Rowan with a with a double to knock in the winning run. Kane takes high two and two. Well, McDonald now is a pitch away from walking Matt Kane. I always think it's a plus when you can open up the inning against the pitcher, but if you don't get him, that's right at Alvarez. Good at bat. Well, here's the day you were talking about type last year when Willie Mays came out and handed the the flag that said world champion. They went down the line and every player touched it. And then Brian Wilson trotted out to right center field and hoisted the flag. He said, "I just want to make sure it was right side up." And indeed, it was. Well, that was a beautiful day. Here's Pagan who takes the pitch high. Yeah, it was. And then the next day. I'm not going to say it was better, but it was just as good. That's when everybody got their rings. Never forget those days. That yeah, curveball is not there for McDonald right now. He's out there with a fastball and changeup. He got to wear tails. Yes, we did. That's the first time I ever wore a tuxedo yep. with tails. Yep. I wear one all the time now. Yeah. Two will pitch to Pagan. Three and oh. If I ever see you in tails, and I'm not in tails, then something's wrong. <laughs> okay, we'll make that pact. I'm in. Three and one now to Pagan. This guy pointed out earlier, Pagan's got good numbers against McDonald. Mm -hmm. Pagan lifts it out of play. Bruce Bochy has said that he's going to give Pagan a little bit of rope to try to get things figured out. But if not, he's got ideas as to who he'll put in that leadoff spot. Hit into center field. McCutcheon is going to track it down. AT&T. Opening week continues. The Phillies will be in town Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Here's your pitching matchup. <coughs> Winscombe against Holiday on Monday. Ah, that's not very good. Bumgarner and Blanton. Nah. Kane and Lee. Nah. <laughs> Come on. Those, those promise to be pretty good pitch games across the board. And at SFGiants.com to purchase tickets. The Phillies are in town. Cabrera fouls it out of play. Lucky Cabrera hit a line single into right field in his first at bat. Sandoval to follow. What a, what a beautiful day. Two and one. See the unusual habit of Cabrera taking his right hand, the low hand on the bat, and putting the forefinger up just to relax the tension in his lower hand. You want to have a light grip on the bat, and it's just one way of him being able to to do that very thing. Now your hands are going to tighten up as you throw the bat head. And Cabrera takes the walk. All right, here's our Geico quote of the game. 
Yogi Berra talking about home openers. And he said a home opener is always exciting, whether it's home or on the road. Uh, you know what? I'm not. St I'm saying Yogi did not say that. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> I'm saying he did. A home opener is always exciting, whether it's home uh, or on the I'm road. I'm saying it was after a win when the boys were in the clubhouse a couple of hours after the game. Yeah, a couple of pops. And yeah, some pops, and Yogi said that. Okay, that makes more sense. But he did say it. Ross, a visit out to the mound. Sandoval at the play. Sandoval hit the ball well, but it was tracked down in left field by Presley. So off the end of the bat into right center field, and it's going to hang up for Jones, and that'll end the inning. No runs, a walk, one left. We played three innings here in the home opener. The Giants are leading 2 nothing. Fan guide for a chance to win a VIP experience for two this year at an MLB World Series game. Presented by Scotts, the official lawn care company of MLB. Two nothing Giants. Matt Kane went nine up, nine down. So here in the fourth, he'll face the Pirates leadoff hitter, Alex Presley. Presley struck out to open up the ball game. Here he shows bunt and he takes a strike. You see a lot of first pitch strikes when when Kane has got a good rhythm going and he's got a great one going. Just a tad low for Rungi the plate umpire. Sandoval but three steps in on the grass. And it's chopped right where Sandoval was standing. One out. Let's check in with Amy G. Amy. Well, gentlemen, you know I make no bones about being a fan of our CSN Bay Area insiders, and we've got a new one that we want to welcome to the family. Andy Baggerly is the Giants insider on CSNBayArea.com. You should follow him on Twitter. It's at CSN Bags, and you can follow Giants Talk when you log on to CSN Bay Area all season long. He's got all the details. Can you guess who my favorite insider is, though, guys? Yes, I can, Amy. That would be Paul Gutierrez, Raiders insider. Hmm. Wonder if Amy thinks Andy's better at it than Paul is. She would never say that. She could think it, though. Good change up. Well, that's neutralizing a 1 0 count. Now, Walker's got some power. I mean, when he's sitting in that 1 0 count, 2 0, 3 1 slot, he's looking to drive something. Kane took it away with that good changeup, 1-0. Oh. 
Out of play, one and two. Two seam fastball with movement running away from Walker. It's a subtle movement. It's a sink that will get a ground ball. You try and pull it, you roll it over. And then he'll force seam you across the letters. He can bounce a curveball at the plate. Another change up. Lots of options here. Head to count one, two. Two balls, two strikes. There's the big fist. Yeah. I love that thing. Tough to throw that one. Seriously. You can not throw it. <laughs> you can throw a punch. Come on. Three and two to Walker. McCutcheon to follow. Slowly hit to Huff. Huff right near the bag. Two out. And three two changeup. He just does not give in to any count. He'll throw anything he's got. Such a weapon. McCutcheon saw one pitch and popped out. To Emmanuel Burris to end the first inning. Two nothing Giants. If you just tuned in, Posey doubled in Cabrera, who had singled, and then Huff knocked in Posey. Is McCutcheon chasing the first pitch, and it's 0 and 1. And he will chase that that fastball above the letters. I mean, that's one weakness he has is that he will chase high. But he has been the only Pirate that's really been hot. Well, he and Casey McGee, the three four guys. Huff and Burris and Burris at the very end stumbled a little bit and couldn't come up with it. That's no man's land when you consider where the right fielder plays here in this ballpark. And the right fielder well off the line. This is a ballpark where you'll see the right center field gap taken away by right fielder. So it means that the second baseman's got to cover some ground on those pop ups. About a yard short. Yeah, just a yard. Off his fist and out of play. Put the backup slider in a good one. If you could do that every time, if you could throw a backup slider anytime you want, that'd be one of the greatest pitchers in the game. It would. But a backup slider happens when you're trying to throw a good slider. You throw a cement mixer up there, it spins, but it doesn't break. And there is a drop down fastball. He will drop down with the breaking ball too. If you're going to drop down your throwing angle, you got to throw all your pitches. You can't just throw a breaking ball or a fastball. You got to throw them all. Check swing roller under the glove of King. It'll be Crawford who throws him out. Wow! What a beautiful play by Brandon Crawford to end the inning. King has been perfect through four. What a play that was.
and by authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates LP. All right, time now for our trivia question brought to you by AT&T. What pitcher has recorded the most career wins at AT&T since it opened in 2000? Let's think about that. Here's Buster Posey. Posey doubled the ball off the wall to knock in Cabrera in the first inning. Look out. Two balls and no strike. He cannot get that curveball working. He is out of sync with it. It is not his friend right now, and he cannot count on it getting in the strike zone. Posey with a good rip. I was always told when I was coming up that if you're going to throw your breaking ball early in the game, throw it when you're heading the count and throw it so you can bounce it. It'll make you finish the pitch. It'll get you to establish down with the pitch. If you try and throw it for a strike too often, you miss it high and you can lose it. And it's happened with McDonald. Giants in that dugout, they've identified it. He's not getting that curveball over and they're not even thinking about it. Posey takes the walk. How about this play, Mike? Yeah, this is the play that ended before the Buckos in the top of the fourth. It looked like it may have just skimmed under the glove of Kane, but watch Brandon Crawford crash in on it. I mean, he is really charging hard, watches it into the bare hand, and unloads an underarm seed right over to Huff. And a very quick McCutcheon is shot down, and it ain't even close. And look at the reaction from Matt Kane. Nice fans are going to be privileged to watch this young man play shortstop this year. He is something else. How about for a long time? Yeah, for a long time. Here's Huff. Huff knocked in a run with a line drive single to right field in the first. One ball and no strikes. Lined into center field at McCutcheon, and McCutcheon will put it away. Well, you get a chance to watch the Sharks on the airplane last night against the Blues. Well, game two will be tomorrow. 4:30, they'll drop the puck. Pre-game live will be at 4 p.m. And where can you see it? On Comcast Sportsnet California. So, congratulations on the win yesterday. And that was one of the cool things about flying in from Denver last night is that game was on and we got to see it as a collective group. A double overtime win. We only got to see it because we circled for about an hour before landing because of the weather. But that was the upside to it. Troops were fired up. Giants watching very closely. Brian Wilson a huge hockey fan was a Bruins fan when he was a kid growing up in the Northeast. And he played hockey. He said when he was a kid, they used to spend a couple hours shoveling off the, the snow on the pond and they would play hockey well in the evening. He loves it, but he's a huge Sharks fan. In tight to Sherholtz. Pablo Sandoval a few years ago dropped the puck at center ice for one of the Sharks games. He was fired up last night with the overtime win for the Sharks. So congratulations, Sharks. We're all watching here from the Giants organization. Good luck. So you think all those those winners in Venezuela Sandoval played a lot of hockey. He didn't know much about it until he started meeting some of the, the Sharks hockey players who come to a lot of games. And has become friends with several of them. Well it's really the way you connect. Sure holds out of play. He lined a single in the left field in the second inning. Two balls, two strikes. And Schultz pops it up. It'll either be McGee or Walker, or maybe neither.
There's Nick Peters. Nick, former great baseball writer, is 55th Giants home opener. How about the Hall of Famer has never missed a Giants home opener. He might be able to tell you something about every one of those home openers. Yep. He has written a lot of history about the Giants over the years. Deservedly a, a Hall of Fame writer. One of the great guys. Sherholtz lifts this one out to left for Presley. Two outs. But he's been to them all from 1958 all the way to 2012. The thing I liked about Nick is he was when he traveled and he did a lot of traveling following the Giants. But uh, he didn't believe in routine. You know, I think I'll drive to the next city. And he'd rent a car and instead of flying to the next city, he'd check out the sites and, and drive from or wherever Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. It was Crawford swings and misses. No balls in one strike. So he wasn't afraid to take a different route. Good yeah, for if, him. if you like the blues, he knows every dive in the planet yeah. that, that plays good blues. Posey led the inning off with a walk. Crawford. No balls in one strike. Crawford lined out to right field. He's 0 for 1. Here he lifts this one out into left center field. And Presley will put it away to end the inning. Through four. Two nothing Giants. What pitcher has recorded the most career wins here at AT&T since it opened up 2000? Or survey said. Well, Jason Schmidt, 41 times he was a winner here in this ballpark. And he was a great giant. 41 and 16 here. Matt Kane, 39 and 35. And Tim Linska, 36 and 22. They like the friendly confines of AT&T. Here's Casey McGee. And McGee fouls it at home plate. McGee, a native of Santa Cruz, went to Fresno State. One of the good guys in baseball. I was really surprised that he left Milwaukee and went to Pittsburgh. But the Pittsburgh Pirates are excited that he is going to be in that lineup all year. And a call strike, nothing in two. Today in the Chronicle about Crazy Legs Howard. 
the kettle can man you just blow our booth kettle selling corn. kettle corn and he wanted to talk <laughs> there he is good story Sam Winnie wrote the story for the Chronicle he is a dancing machine and one thing I didn't know that he travels all over the stadium he does not go into the upper deck it's too steep for him up there is McGee a swing and it is. There's a crazy legs Howard. He's a fixture around here, very entertaining. And you can tell he is not afraid to have fun. Here's Garrett Jones. But he doesn't stick to one section. He goes all over this club level, the one below. Too steep, upper deck. Swing and a foul into the glove of Posey. Garrett Jones, plenty of power. Foul out of play. Get called up in 2009, and in 314 at bats, 82 games, about half a year. He had 21 homers and had 44 RBIs, and everybody in Pittsburgh fell in love with the guy. Followed it up last or in 2010 with a 21 home run year. And last year he had 16. He's got one lifetime off of King. Is Jones dribbles this one foul, but he's got a swing that really is built for PNC Park, which has a short porch and right. Really invites guys with power to try and pull, and he can do that. On his hands, and he fouls it over the backstop. Nice high fastball across the letters. It's always been a good weapon of Matt Kane. Him. Right up again. He knows a guy's got a weakness up there. He will pound you. And it's a dangerous pitch because if you lay it out there too low, it gets crushed. You got to go right above the letters. Perfectly placed. And this, as we mentioned, this is one of his strengths since the day he walked into the big leagues. A power position, short stride, release right over the front foot. Boom. Right by him at the chest. Grabs a pine knee. You love X more. I do. Here's Barajas. And Barajas. Barajas has got one of those softball swings where he just lets it fly. He does. He is not afraid to let it go. He is. And he won't make a two strike adjustment. You know, we always talk about guys getting out front with a release point. It's really a great example. Watch when he cracks the whip. That front, his left foot will plant on our Toyota Exmo, and watch the release point right out front over his front foot. And it's an outstanding view of where you try to get to. And that release point, folks, is perfect. On the ground to Crawford. Side retired. Pirates have not had a base runner in this game. 2 nothing Giants.
is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffIns.com. Here in front of a packed house, it's 2 nothing Giants. There's the SS torture towel. <laughs> that is great. Uh, you think these guys are having fun? Yeah, I do. That's a scary ball right there, I gotta tell you. Here's Burris, followed by Kane and then Pagan. Burris on the ground foul. Beth O'Boyle is our ball babe today. And over on the third base side, we have Cheryl Boykin. Cheryl Z, police lieutenant. One ball and one strike. Burris hit a fly ball to left field in the second. Giants have four switch hitters in this lineup. Two balls and a strike. Burris with a good rip and he fouls it to our left right in front of John and Dave over in the KNBR broadcast booth. We issued the challenge to John and Dave that we were going to out broadcast them today. Yep, we were going to out broadcast them. Not easy to do. Just wide, it's three and two. Although John showed up in a bow tie, and I was a little intimidated, I got to tell you. Well, that's been a tradition of his for a long time. Opening day at home, he wears a tuxedo. Yeah, with a bow tie? Yeah. Burris on the ground. It's McGee juggles and steps on first. And with one out, here's Amy G. All right, gentlemen, we have definitely found a little piece of paradise. It's in the newly rebranded Corona Beach Club here at AT&T Park. Honestly, it doesn't get any better than this. There's a little beach behind me in a lounge chair. You get a perfect view, field view of the first base side. Best part about this, Kruko, you're going to love this. First round of beers are on Corona and the Giants, but there's only a handful of games that you can book this section left in the season. Just call 415-972-2298. And gentlemen, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get up out of this chair. It's too comfortable. Shocker. Well, I, I don't think it's the chair. I think it's the three rounds she's already had. Amer? Yeah. Plus, she just called you Kruko. Jeez, what's what? up with that? <laughs> All right, thanks, Gutierrez. It's one and two <laughs> to Matt Kane. Meanwhile, back at the ball game. Here. That's the breaking ball that McDonald's been trying to find, and he found it in the at to Kane. There's the view that Amy's talking about. Well, it's pretty cool. They got sand down there. It has always been a party pit, so they just said, well, let's make it a beach party. These guys are really happy. Yes, they are. The team's winning. Pagan has popped out and he's flied out. And he lays this bunt down foul and it's 0-1. It's not a bad move if you can steal a bag. And Pagan's very capable of doing that. Which is high. One ball and one strike. Well, McDonald threw that really good snapper, that curveball that came. He took for a strike three, his first strike out of the game, but he comes back with it again. This is an eye. Change up, missing high. So he has got a little push in his delivery. Talk about how Matt Kane is out front with his delivery. You can't say that about McDonald.
A shot speared by Walker and Pagan will be thrown out. It's always the guy that needs the hits that can't get him. Two nothing Giants. We go back fourth inning, two outs, ball hit right past the glove of Matt Kane to watch Randy Crawford come in and shoot down Andy McCutcheon. The hand and the foot touch the ground at the same time, and in one sweeping action with the arm, they shoot him down. That's our Coors Light Freeze Camp brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Here's Pedro Alvarez who takes the ball. Alvarez struck out in the third inning. On deck is Josh Hansen and then McDonald as Alvarez chases the pitch down low to even the count. That's four swing throughs on changeups. Struck out against came back in the third on three swing through changeups and here he gets him again in a 1 0 count. He is not seeing it at all. And a strike to make it 1 and 2. And the fastball away sets up another changeup. The line between McDonald and Kane. McDonald really is hanging in there. Got him. And there's that setup changeup for strikeout number seven. Well, fans, May 2nd is Filipino Heritage Night presented by Ligo Sardines. Your special event package includes the ticket to the game of one of the Filipino. Heritage sections, a limited edition of Filipino Heritage Night sunglasses. For tickets, call 415-972-2298 or go to sfgiants.com slash special events. And you got to get on this one early because this event sells out fast. Harrison bounced out to Crawford. Here he takes a strike. Over the left shoulder of Buster Posey, and now it's nothing and two. Well, he has been on top of these guys all day long. Strike one, bang, O2 quick. I mean, it's he's got everything working and a great feel of everything in the strike zone. Hit into center field. Plug on. Two down. Sixty five pitches through five and two thirds. And he has not thrown any more than 14 pitches in any one inning. 
He has been in total command and he has not been in the stretch yet. Here's McDonald who. Lined out to right field. I mean he had one of the best at bats today. Indeed he did. Lined out to nature holds in right center. One ball and one strike. A few times he's missed with that fastball. Normally, when Posey has put the target up, that fastball has been right between the knees. Inside, outside, he's elevated that fastball beautifully above the letters with consistency. And a base hit. Kane had retired 17 in a row until James McDonald singles to left field. Well, a standing ovation as he took a perfect game into the sixth inning with two outs. And wouldn't you know it, it was the pitcher that broke it up. Yeah. So now for the first time today, he's going to pitch out the stretch. Fastball up. And even to a pitcher, that's the easiest area to defend. And McDonald makes him pay for the two strike mistake. Here's Presley who struck out and bounced out. And he fouls this one out of play and it's 0 and 1. Right back in the strike zone ahead on the count 0 and 1 again. Nothing in two. Again, Posey wants the elevator fastball up across the letters. I love it when a guy could pitch with a fastball. I thought Kurt Schilling was one of the best I ever saw with it. Where at times I thought he didn't need anything else but the fastball because he could use the strike zone, knee high location, high in out, and Matt Cain can do that. Did not missed by much. Cain will use the two seam and the four seam fastball. He'll throw it down around the knees on both sides of the plate. He'll elevate. Pitch for ground balls with it. I think he, he gets into a game like he's today. I mean, a fastball changeup. It's the way he locates the fastball. That's all you need. He tried to back through a slider. When he's missed, it hasn't been far from the strike zone. He sent a wide target. Just a little bit yep. outside. Property call. Three and two. McDonald will take off. Got him. Eight strikeouts for Kane. Good up for the Giants.
Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Love bacon? Then try the new BLT cheeseburger combo right now at Jack in the Box for just $4.99 plus tax. 2 nothing Giants as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Take a look at our upcoming games brought to you by the Three Stooges, the movie in theaters today. And the Giants are going to entertain the Pirates all weekend. Tomorrow you'll see a CSN game here, 5.30, check us out. And then a 12.30 CSN game on Sunday. And then here come the Phillies. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, 6.30 game. You'll see that on CSN. Then a NBC Bay Area game. You'll see it at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. And then it's on day off and on to New York. We're the first two of that four-game set with the Mets. You'll see right here on CSN at 3.30 Pacific time. Here's Melky Cabrera who shoots it on the ground to Walker. And Walker throws to McGee. Cabrera out on one pitch. Well, take the Giants with you. MLB.tv. Subscribe to MLB.tv today. See every out. See every out of market Giants game live online in HD quality. Visit SFGiants.com to order. Here's Sandoval. Sandoval takes wide. He's flied out to left. He's flied out to right. At the knees, Buster Posey to follow. Seventy four pitches for James McDonald. Understand the outside part of the plate the whole game against Pablo Sandoval. And that one went on the inside corner with a hit, set the outside target. Well, take a look where Alvarez, and now they're going to pull the shift. The overshift. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that to Sandoval. Three and two. Well, I don't. I mean, he hit so many balls to left field. If you notice, the outfield has stayed pretty straight away. So they're thinking if he hits the ball on the ground, it's going to be pulled. If it's hit in the air, it'll be anywhere in the ballpark. He hits it high out into right center field, and it is off the bricks. Sandoval on the move. Sandoval on the move, and he puts on the brakes. Love that one. Tell me this guy wasn't a fullback in some other life. High fastball, 3 2 challenge, and he just rifles a high line drive off the wall right. And when he saw this thing kick away from right field with Garrett Jones, he's thinking three bags. And you do that with one out. And watch how aggressive he is anticipating a possible three bagger. He rounds second in, drops anchor. Good thing, too. He can move. He can. Here's Buster Posey, a double and a walk. One ball and no strike. Aubrey Huff is on deck. I'm starting to see. Some bullpen activity for the Pirates. Right now, it's a left hander. Tony Watson, the only left hander in their bullpen's up, getting greased. And Rod Barajas is going to come out with pitching coach Ray Searich, and they're going to kill a little time. Allow Watson a chance to get a few more throws. After the first inning, when James McDonald gave up a couple of runs on three hits to the Giants, I mean he's been pretty, he's been pretty good, and he's done it without a curveball. He hasn't had all his weapons. He said that was one of the keys with McDonald before the game. Is if he gets that curveball going, it can be a rough day. But 
you an idea of how he's evolved as a pitcher. He's managed to make it work and keep his team close with just a couple of pitches. So Searage back into the dugout. It's 2 0 to Buster Posey. Three and zero. Now the runner in score position, a three-zero pitch is one you'll take a shot at if it's where you want it. You look for a pitch, you look for a location, middle in, middle out. If you get a good pitch, have at it. He does, and he pops it to right field, and Jones will put it away. Two outs. Go back to the first inning and Buster Posey got things started offensively. And he takes a fastball middle in and he just spanks it off the wall in center. I and mean, we all thought it was out of here. And Milky Cabrera coming all the way from first base. Puts the first run of the boys in this game and in this season here at home for the Giants. You always hope you can get your fan base if you have a large crowd into the game early. Well, Buster did it with that swing of the bat. So they're going to take their chances with Nate Scherholz. I mean, Huff had some pretty good numbers against McDonald. He's four for nine coming into today's ball game. He's got a single and a line out. So Ben Hurdle, who's an old hitting coach, recognizes a guy who sees a guy well, and he thinks Huff's that guy. So he's not going to mess with him. Holtz singled in the second. Going to hit a fly ball to left field in the fourth. Six hits in the ball game. One for the. Pirates Giants with five. So here's Nate Scherholz. And he goes for the breaking ball, which he's only thrown one or two really good breaking balls in this game. That's the problem with the 12 6 breaking curveball. At times it can. It can be tough to get in the strike zone. Two and oh. 87 pitches now for James McDonald. I'm sure Holtz has worked himself into count leverage here. McCutcheon broke back and it falls. Huff to third, Scherholz into second. Right now, center field is not much fun. You got a lot of wind and you got sun right in your face. And McCutcheon, who usually is a very good route runner, got totally fooled. He expected more fly ball than he got. A 2 0 pop up. But McCutcheon reads it wrong. He breaks back. Now he's got to sweep in and he cannot adjust, not even with his speed. And that's the swing of the bat that's going to give McDonald out of the game. And he's a good outfielder. Yes, he is. So that's going to do it for McDonald. The lefty is coming in when it's time for a change. Then Speedy, oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. 3 0. We'll be back.
Geico.com. A 3 0 lead for the Giants. They've scored here in the sixth inning. The new pitcher is Tony Watson. So Watson will be facing Brandon Crawford. With two outs, and the first pitch is wide. Take a look at Tony Watson. They're in a couple of games, slow to get started. Got good stuff. Got a little crossfire in his delivery, a little crossover step. Came up through the Pirates organization. There's a strike. Nice visit. Joe Morgan just stopped in to say hi. Joe looks good. He does. Said he's lost 60 pounds. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. Just 23. He has lost some weight though. Crawford on the ground. It'll be McGee who will take it himself and that'll end the inning. Giants tack on a run through six. Three nothing San Francisco. Game series Tuesday night. The Giants will honor former Giant Pat Burrell as he will throw out the ceremonial first pitch. There are still dynamic view, view reserve tickets available for 15 bucks for that game. Come out early. Honor Pat the Bat, SFGiants.com. 3 0 Giants. Walker, McCutcheon, and Casey McGee to face Kane here in the seventh. First pitch. Fastball and it's fouled over the backstop and it's no balls in one strike. Under his arms it's one ball and one strike. Walker had a great year last year. And he is one of the keys for this pirate team. Former first round pick. That's hit foul. One and two. And the one-two pitch coming up. He got him. Oh, a little cutter, and I'm talking late movement, and it really fooled Walker. I bet the I bet the movement on this was about four inches, just a little subtle slide. By the time he tried to defend it, it was too late. It was by him. 
ninth strikeout for Kane. Here's McCutcheon. McCutcheon has popped out and then hit that slow roller on a check swing past the mound and Crawford made a beautiful play to throw him out. Two and oh. McCutcheon out to a great start. He really he and McGee are the only two guys really put together good at bats. So Kane, who has not issued a walk, is now behind in the count, three and zero. Oh. Three and one. Some three zero paint right there. Go right back out, same location. He's been able to do just about everything he's wanted to do with that fastball today. Crawford to his left. You down. You know, he's kind of like Omar Vizquel. I mean, you don't really care what type of hop he's going to get because he's going to be able to handle it. I mean, this ball comes up on him as he goes to his left, and it was hit right on the button. He is sweet, folks. Infielders would rather have night games. Why? Because the infield doesn't dry out as much. And you get decent hops. So hard infield. Not, Not something good. you like. Well, what, seven out of the first nine games, day games for the Giants this year? Headed just below us. <laughs> McGee is flied out and he's struck out. And he hammers this one out into center field for Pagan. And that will end the inning. One, two, three inning for Kane. Three nothing Giants. It's three nothing Giants bottom of the seventh inning. Let's check in, check in with Gutierrez. All right, Kuiper. Hey, the Giants have a knack for making things really special, and today's ceremonial first pitch was probably one of the best that I've ever seen. 
they went to the Stowe family, and Tyler Stowe, son of Brian Stowe, represented his dad on the mound today, and to his own surprise, turned around onto the scoreboard to see his father and his grandmother via satellite. Brian Stowe's mother gave a heartfelt message to the fans, and Brian Stowe handed his son that ball to throw, and Tyler came through with the strike. It was great, you guys. I haven't seen anything more special than that, gentlemen. Yeah, that was a good one, and Tyler, you know, I mean, he hit the radar gun pretty high. Yeah, I'm impressed. He winged it. The, the saga of Brian Stowe and the Stowe family has been one of the most incredibly inspiring stories that I've ever been witness to. You talk about a testimony of, of will and family support, strength from friends. It's just amazing what transpired here in the last year, and, and he looks fantastic. 3 nothing, Giants. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Evan Meek, the new pitcher now for the Pirates. Has made a couple appearances, two strikeouts in two innings. Got a good fastball to go low to mid-90s with a good hard slider. Burris, Kane, and Pagan here in the seventh inning. And Burris shows bun and he takes high. In at third is Alvarez. Grounded to the second baseman Walker. Burris is retired. Remember Sharks are on tomorrow night. It'll be game two of their playoff series against the Blues. 430 will be the start of that that matchup and then for game live will start at four and top guest sports Net California. Nice ovation for Matt Kane as he steps in for his third at bat. Forty one thousand one hundred and thirty eight here at the park. On the ground foul. We started getting weather reports when we arrived in Denver on Monday on how bad it was going to be weather wise, how bad it was going to be here in San Francisco for the home opener. And uh, and I believed it last night. I believe the reports. But today has been beautiful. I told you, Mother Nature is a season ticket holder here. She sits in section 219 and she got a great day for us. A ball and a strike to Kane. I'm going to say Kane went around. They be Marvin Hudson. One and two. Kane hits it to short. Where Harrison will make the play. Two outs. Here's Pagan. Pagan's hit the ball okay today. He just doesn't have anything to show for it. And consequently, he's now three for 26 on the season. Well, you got to believe his hits are coming. And it, 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 it wasn't just today where he had the Adam ball working against him. It was the same thing in Denver. He had some good at bats, but every time he'd square one up, it was right to a glove. And how frustrating is that when you're scuffling yeah. and you start to hit the ball hard and it gets caught, especially on a new team. You stay with the team for a while. You got some history and your fans understand you. Boy, it's really different when you come to a new city and you start out slow. High to left field for Presley. As the wind starts to carry it, and Presley goes back and he puts it away. Meek with a one, two, three, seventh inning, eighth inning coming up.
All right, let's check out our Toyota game summary brought to you by, well, your local Toyota dealer. McDonald broke up Kane's no hitter with a base hit in the sixth inning. He was touched up for three runs. Buster Posey has a double and an RBI in this game. Aubrey Huff has an RBI in this game. Nate Scherholtz has an RBI in this game. And it's 3 0. Is Kane facing Garrett Jones, Rod Barajas, and then Pedro Alvarez. Eighth inning. Kane with 87 pitches. Well, that got Buster right square in the teeth. Watch Posey set that high target, wanting the high fastball. And it's something they've used beautifully today. Good thing again, elevate, see the glove. He wants it up high. And Kane, who has always been able to pitch up there, boom, blows him right away again. Such an effective weapon. Once you establish the knee high location with the fastball in the eye of a hitter, you can change sight lines and they'll follow right above the letters. They see it early, they see it big, and they can't lay off it. Jones way out in front as he rolls it foul. Kane has moved that fastball around beautifully and he's pitched off of that fastball with a changeup beautifully. I don't think any of the Pirates are going up there thinking about a breaking ball. They're thinking about the fastball changeup combination. He has been flawless with it. Got him. Third time. Double digits now in strikeouts for Kane. Oh, nice little use of a slider. And cuts it right below the strike zone out over the outside corner and gets Garrett Jones to chase. So here's Barajas. It's just a perfectly located slider and taking use of a taking good use of a one two count. That was pitch number 90 for Kane. Out of play, it's no balls and one strike to Barajas. Looking to yank every at bat. Sandoval gets a fair ball as it hugged the line. Two down. Take a look at the Toyota Expo. The release point on the changeup, the circle change right out front over his foot beautifully, and he gets Alvarez. And the circle change, you take the forefinger and the thumb and you make a circle on the side of the ball and you throw that pitch with the weak side of your hand. You don't get the same push on a fastball with the same arm action, you get a, a ball that's about eight miles per hour slower. Alvarez, who's seen nothing but changeups, rolls it foul. He has not picked it up at all. You know, it happened with Greg Maddox when he first got to the big league. He's kind of a two-pitch pitcher. Then he learned the changeup, and it really took him to another level. It really took him to the Hall of Fame. Inside. And for Kane, the same thing. He showed up the big leagues, had a fastball, curveball slider, and he learned the changeup. And it really it elevated his education quickly, and he got to his, an elite status. Well, it's one and two. That last pitch of fastball. And Alvarez has got to be thinking he's going to see a changeup pretty time. Anytime soon. You put that thought in the guy's head, you got him. Got him. Eleven strikeouts. Kane heads to the dugout. And many of the folks are standing. Three nothing Giants.
Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. 3 nothing Giants win the bottom half of the eighth inning. New pitcher now for these Pirates. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts, Joe Hanrahan, their closer. Needs some work. 1-0. Four strikeouts in two innings, and he's got a good, healthy fastball that'll go 95-99. He augments that with a slider. Kind of a two-pitch guy, but that fastball's money. Melky Cabrera dribbles it foul. One for two for Cabrera. Hanrahan last year for these Pirates had 40 saves. Sandoval, Posey. Out of play. One and two. A little tardy on that swing. That fastball at 95. And the movement on the fastball, if he gets it up around the belt, it, it runs away from a lefty. It'll bore flat into a righty. Shot past Alvarez for a base hit. And that's who that movement was. And that's what Milky Cabrera does so well. If you pound him on the outside corner with a a fading fastball like Hanrahan did. I mean, he lifted it up and Cabrera went right with it. So disciplined to go with the location. And you see the mistake of location, but he goes right with it. Doesn't try to pull it. Oh, that is such a compact swing. That's a swing built for average right there, folks. The swing built for maybe someday pick up 200 hits in a season. Like last year, 201 with the Royals. Here's Sandoval. One for two. Check that. Yes, one for three. The Sandoval's last at bat, he hit one out into Triple's alley off the bricks, and he takes a strike. Haven't seen many high strikes today. That certainly was one of them. Better to see it the first strike than the third strike. Sandoval takes low. That'll even the count at a ball and a strike. Cabrera with his lead. Sandoval wanted to go, but he held up. It's two balls and one strike. Night game tomorrow. Day game Sunday. And then three night games against the Phillies. Barry Zeno coming off of his shutout performance in Colorado, going to pitch tomorrow. And then Ryan Vogelsong comes off the disabled list. He's going to pitch that game three against the Pirates. Cabrera goes. Sandoval lifts it to left. Presley comes in and he makes the catch. One out. And that'll bring up Buster Posey. Posey with a big swing of the bat back in the first inning to light this crowd up. Give you an idea of you know, one of the the reasons. You know, here's a, a Giants team over the last three years that has been challenged offensively. They've hit three balls today that would be home runs in most ballparks. Yeah, you're still going to get extra bases out of it, but it is just a tough yard to, to hit the ball out of. Posey's would have been a home run. Sandoval probably, well, not probably, he'd have had one. He may have had two. Yeah. His first at bat. When he flied out deep to left field, would have been a home run in both Coors Field and Chase Field, where they just came from on the last road trip. Cabrera goes, and he's going to steal it. He had an enormous jump. 
his first year with a giant uniform. I mean, watch this jump. I mean, he's almost five steps into it before Hanrahan releases the ball. Wow. No chance for Rod Barajas. That was stolen off the pitcher. Barajas did throw out Nate Sherholtz in the second trying to steal. One ball and one strike. Off the plate, two and one. Yeah, that's a big 90 feet, but it definitely changes the way you pitch to Buster Posey if you're Joel Hanrahan. You do not have to throw him a strike now with an open first base. Out of play, two and two. Chris Bochy was talking to us the other day about how Buster Posey you know, he hasn't played in a long time and how the speed of the game, he's still trying to catch up to the speed of the game. And part of the speed of the game is velocity that you get out of pitchers. But I got to tell you something. He's this he is lifted over and into the dugout as Casey McGee gave it a good effort. But I think he's starting to catch it up. Well, it's amazing how much rust can get in there when you take that much time off and basically missed the whole season last year. This has seemed that way. And then even at that. He wasn't allowed to do normal baseball routine that you would do in the offseason because he had to rehab a, a very, very tough injury. It set you back. I agree with you. The rust is starting to come on. Absolutely. Emergency swing. Yeah. Stay alive. Live to see another pitch. Huff on deck. Got him. That's a perfect pitch right there. Yeah, it really was. Like he backed off a little on the slider, man, or it could have just been a straight cutter. I mean. It didn't have a lot of movement. He just shaved that outside corner. And Brian Runke says, see ya. Runke has been steady all day long to that outside part of the plate on both sides. Huff is single. He's lined out to center field and he's walked. And got underneath that would push it up there. Rojas never had a chance. We get word that that's a wild pitch. You agree with that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. The guy throws as hard as Hanrahan. Throws it above your head as a catcher. It's tough. Rajas having to work here in the eighth inning. Did you see the note about Pat Burrell? Yes, I did. Let's share it with our audience. Pat Burrell, if you didn't know, has signed a one day contract. Or will sign a one day contract. And he'll do that in May so he can retire as a Philly. He played nine of his 12 big league seasons in Philadelphia. And I believe he's going to throw out 
know exactly what the date is, but he'll throw out the first pitch in Philadelphia. Of course, he'll be doing that on Tuesday night here at AT&T Park as Huff takes a strike, and we mentioned that with Huff at the plate. And those two were a great story in 2010. They were a great combination. Good guy, bad guy, and then they change on and off as to who the good guy, bad guy was. Yeah, they did play off each other well. It worked. High and deep to right. It is out of here. Up's first of the year. And it's now five to nothing. And this place is having a party. Huff looked through a 3 0 fastball and thought, Nimmy had that one again, and Hanrahan does. He throws it away from the target. They set up away. It comes back middle in. And Huff was laying in the bushes, and this is what he does. A one hop water shot. Here's Nate Scherholz, who drives it into right center field. McCutcheon is going to get underneath it, and he'll put it away. Matt Cain's coming out. It's 5 0 Giants. Time now for our McDonald's True Stories. 11 strikeouts today. It's a career high, well, short of one. His career high 12. He did it against the Rockies in 2006. But he has been amazing since the first pitch of this game. A one hitter as he faces Josh Harrison in the first pitch of call strike. He's three pitches away from the 100 mark. Pagan moving over to his left. One out. He has been so steady to strike one. He has had 19 swing throughs where the Pirates have swung at and completely missed the ball. Give you an idea of how deceptive he's been. There hasn't been anything he hasn't been able to do out there. His last outing in Arizona, I mean. A couple times he, he got out of the arm stop, had a hard time getting back into it. Today he has been a machine. Here's Matt Haig, a pinch hitter. You see his numbers. He's one for two this year. I mentioned earlier, 41,138, a sellout here at AT&T Park. And came with a strike. 
and that was pitch 100. I like that ratio. 69 strikes, 31 balls, and those 31 balls did not miss by much. Strikeouts, no walks, one runner allowed. And that hit came off the bat of the pitcher, James McDonald. Tap to Sandoval. Two down. Well, Rick Russell, old teammate of mine, who's a great pitcher, said, you know what the definition of genius is? It's when you make something very hard but very easy. And Matt Kane has been a genius today. Here's Alex Presley. Out of play, 0 and 1. Again, right on top of him, 0 1. That has been the theme. Side one ball and one strike. Stay in the rhythm. Couldn't see in the ninth inning at times to pick it up a little bit. He has stayed right steady with the same rhythm he opened the game with. Cannot get any more focused than what he has shown today. Crawford. Ball game. Complete game shutout. Home opener. Matt King. I don't know if it gets any better than that for a starting pitcher. Yeah, he makes something very hard look very easy, and he did it with an incredible command of his fastball, his changeup, all of his breaking balls. He had it all going today, and he made it look easy, partner. 11 strikeouts in no walk. Well, and just really one base runner, the only blemish on, came off the bat of James McDonald, the starting pitcher for the Pirates. Amazing performance, and what a great day here at the yard. Aubrey Huff with three RBIs and a home run. Buster Posey in RBI, Nate Scherholz in RBI. So in front of the sellout crowd, the Giants shut out the Pittsburgh Pirates, and they do it by a final of five to nothing. East Sharon's Giants post game live with interviews in the Raptors coming up. But first, let's go to the Sportsnet Central Studio for an update. Thank you for watching Giants Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group.